Okay, carrying on with the review here, um, one last aspect of the old style tolerance zones, the square, rectangular, whatever they turn out to be, is what's wrong with that? Well, we explain why it's wrong or why it's a problem is that we can end up with centers that ideally would be here, but they could just as easily be here or here or here or anywhere. And the reason these square corner tolerance zones, rectangular square, are a problem is they're not uniform. They don't allow the same criteria for evaluating a part. Where if I have a part here, I accept it because it's inside the boundaries. If I have a, a center of a hole here, right out on the very far right, right field edge, I still have to accept it. It's in that defined boundary of tolerance zone. But if I put one here, that's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here, I reject that. Okay, so that's a lack of, that lack of uniformity of that tolerance zone makes me reject a, part, a feature that was here, but I would have to accept it here. So that's not a good basis for consistency of parts, and that's the reason why this square tolerance zone, and the whole reason why we have GD&T, is that we want a uniform tolerance zone, and in this case, the only uniform tolerance zone would be a circle, and we talked about that, so that's the real reason why GD&T exists at all, is that the tolerance zone is not consistent or is not uniform. Okay, um, I'm not going to say much about the symbols and the groups. Um, you should by now know the different groups of form, orientation, position, profile, etc. And which symbols belong in which. Um, just memorize it. Um, it will be beneficial to you on the final. Um, I want you to remember that um, there, the tolerance control symbols are grouped for a reason because the different controls do different things. They, they uh, address different aspects of error. The first one we talked about is the primary one, which is the form, which is um, straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. And we said those are intrinsic. That means that we don't compare a feature to any other feature when we're controlling its form. We're just evaluating that feature for one of those characteristics, straight, flat, round, etc. So in that instance, since we don't have to or we can't uh, address another feature, we never use a datum. A feature control frame that looks like this is wrong. It makes no sense. We cannot evaluate the flatness of a feature compared to another feature. That is not the purpose. So those uniquely, um, tolerances of form never use a datum. Conversely, of course, with tolerances of orientation, the orientation controls uh, being angularity, perpendicularity, and parallelism. They always have a datum because they are controlling rotational degrees of freedom. And when we talk about rotation, we have to rotate from one thing or one position to another one. So we're always comparing where the element is compared to something else. It's either parallel to, so if I'm controlling this, I'm parallel to the sheet. Um, or any sort of angularity control. I've always got a starting point. And that orientation requires that datum as a starting point. <clears throat> Don't forget the distinction between surface elements. If the feature control frame is touching a surface or very often it will be on an extension line like this. That is a surface element that we are controlling. The surface elements, if this is a shaft, 
there are an infinity of lines that we can control the straightness of, for instance. So this could be a straightness control. But we are controlling those elements on the surface. They physically exist, we can physically touch them and measure them. <clears throat> With derived median elements, there is one derived median element. There is one center line to this shaft. And when the when the feature control frame is adjacent to or attached to the dimension line in that fashion, that means we are controlling the derived median element. That derived median element of the shaft just doesn't physically exist. It's buried in the metal. If it were a tube that center line wouldn't exist at all, it would be in the air. So it's, a, it's not even a subtle distinction, it's a key distinction is that surface elements, there's usually many surface elements to control with a derived median element. We're talking about the middle element of something. So it, we have to derive it from the diameter of this shaft. <clears throat> the tolerance zone is going to be different. If this is a straightness tolerance, for the surface elements, it would be two parallel lines. For the uh, derived median element, it will be a cylinder of whatever size the tolerance zone tells you it is. So keep that distinction between derived median elements and surface elements. It is used throughout GDNT. Um, when we get into material conditions, uh, material condition modifiers, Whenever you see that material condition modifier in the, in the tolerance zone block, that is the tolerance zone that's going around the feature. Um, that is what you're controlling. We're controlling the derived median element, straightness element of that previous example. It is stated as a di diameter, so it's a cylindrical tolerance zone. It's five thousandths in diameter, not plus or minus five. It's five thousandths in diameter, so it's effectively plus or minus two and a half. But we don't think about it in those terms in gd and &T. It has a material condition modifier. So what does that mean? Well that shaft, if you remember, was one inch plus or minus five. Whenever we deal with material condition modifiers, we always convert to limit form. It is a shaft. Therefore, the maximum material condition is the upper limit. And how do we interpret that then? How, if you are asked, as you will be, what is the smallest tolerance zone for straightness that's permitted here, you can say the smallest tolerance zone is when the shaft is at maximum material condition. In other words, five. The way this reads in English is, I'm setting up a 5,000th diameter tolerance zone to control the straightness of a derived median element, and it is 5,000th when the feature is at maximum material condition. In other words, this number only applies when the feature is at maximum material condition. The only time you get 5,000th tolerance for straightness is when the shaft is 1 inch 005, in other words, as large as it can be. As it gets smaller, if you turn a thousandth off of it, you get to add that thousand to that tolerance zone because it's no longer at maximum material condition. So the rule is whatever size tolerance is stated in this box is the smallest tolerance zone you're ever going to get. 
and it will only get bigger as you deviate from maximum material condition. And that's true in, in all cases. There are instances where this tolerance can start out at zero. And obviously that would be the smallest tolerance that you could possibly get, zero. And in order to get some tolerance, you have to make sure that your shaft is not at maximum material condition. It's very hard to get across, I think, and you have to think about it for a while, but what is stated in the feature control frame is always the smallest tolerance zone you're going to get. You'll be able to add to that tolerance zone size as the part deviates from maximum material condition. Okay, um, now really the hardest part and the, the thing that takes the longest to, uh, to gain familiarity with with GD&T is the tolerance zone can vary. It can be, uh, it can change in its size and its nature. Sometimes it's parallel lines, sometimes it's parallel planes. Sometimes it's a cylinder, sometimes it's two concentric cylinders, sometimes it's a circle. I mean, it can be a lot of different shapes. So the hardest part for beginning GD and Tiers is to figure out and draw what the boundary is. What is the tolerance zone, both in its size and its shape. So here's an example. I think this was one in the book is you've got a 45 degree angle of this surface. It is drawn with a box around it, that means it's basic. And there is an angularity control of 0.01 and A, and of course this surface is A. All very conventional. Okay, so now you ask yourself, what is the nature of that tolerance zone? We know that the tolerance zone starts and ends with the, with the feature, so it's going to go from here to here. It is uh, 10 thousandths wide, so we get 5 thousandths here and 5 thousandths here, and that's a 10 thousandths wide tolerance zone, and it is oriented along a perfect 45 degree angle. That means that the actual surface could do this. It could tip like that, it could tip like that. As long as it fits within those two parallel planes, it's an acceptable angularity. It can also do things like that, where its form can wiggle all over the place. If it fits in the tolerance zone, it's good. Okay, this is compared to a conventional angular dimension. Let's say we didn't use gd &T in this instance. We used the good old fashioned plus or minuses. So we have 45 degrees, plus or minus a degree, let's say. What does that tolerance zone look like? Well, it looks like this. It goes back to where these, where the angle begins. Right here at this pivot point. And we project out 45 degrees plus one degree. 45 degrees minus one degree. And that's the tolerance zone if you don't use gd &T, where you use just a plus or minus angular tolerance. So the problem here is that the tolerance zone is wide here and it's narrower here. And that's also a non-uniform tolerance zone and that's usually not what you want. So get, a, get in the habit of trying to visualize and actually draw where that tolerance zone is and uh, you'll be able to deal with gd and a lot better.
Okay, I, I want you to remember the special symbols um, and what, they, what they're intended to do. We have some special symbols like P, we have a T, we have a U. Um, now don't confuse these with the material condition modifiers. Don't think that they're similar to this or this on an old drawing that. Those are different they're symbols, but they do different things. Okay, we know we talked at length about the projected tolerance zone. That means that the tolerance zone by default is where the feature starts and where the feature ends. That's the extent of it. The projected tolerance zone says, I'm going to change that rule. I'm going to move it to wherever I want to move it. You can use the projected symbol in the feature control frame and tell how far the, the, the tolerance zone is moved. It's not a good practice, I don't think. Uh, it's, very, it's generally better to draw that tolerance zone. So I don't like this symbol particularly, but that's what it is. Um, the T means that if we have an uneven surface on something and we need to check the flatness of that, um, we're allowed to put a reference flat surface and um, we can check the angularity, the, the uh, uh, position orientation on, a, on an uneven surface. So that is the tangent plane. And that allows us to use an auxiliary to sort of smooth out a rough surface. The U is unequally exposed and we saw that with profile where the default again is with the profile tolerance is that half the tolerance goes into the part, half the tolerance goes out. We can use the uh, unequally disposed tolerance zone symbol in the feature control frame to tell how much of the tolerance zone goes outside of the part. And that's really the only thing that you have to remember about that is there, there will always be a number that follows this. So if you have a 10 thousandths tolerance zone, but it's unequally disposed, you'll say 8 thousandths of it goes out. In other words, the part can get bigger by 8 thousandths, but it can only get smaller by 2 thousandths. It can go all the way up to the total amount of the tolerance. So the tolerance zone is 10 thousandths wide. This says that all ten thousandths of that goes outside the part. In other words, the part as drawn is the smallest it can ever be. And if you're going to add tolerance, you're just going to make the part bigger. Um, don't forget uh, when we talk about these, that these material condition modifiers are intended to adjust the size of the tolerance zone depending on the material condition of the datum or of the feature and also sometimes the datum. Uh, you won't, on, on the test, I know there won't be any questions where you have to evaluate a material condition modifier on a datum, but you will have to uh, address the tolerance zone size at uh, material, at a maximum material condition, just remember that the stated tolerance zone size is at its smallest when the feature is at maximum material condition. As it becomes less maximum material condition and closer to least material condition, the tolerance zone only gets bigger. Okay, um, the only other thing I'm going to remind you about is that I want you to remember this, this whole concept of, of uh, reference frames and uh, degrees of freedom and uh, why, why we have them. We use those to make sure that features are, are oriented and positioned properly on the part, and that means constraining them. And we use GDNT to do those constraints. There are a total of six degrees of freedom in space. There's 
uh, movement along the three axes of fore and aft, side to side, up and down. Um, so we have three translational degrees of freedom to move along those three axes. We also have three rotational degrees of freedom so we can rotate about an axis. So we translate about X, we pitch about X. We translate around, um, uh, we translate along Y and we roll about Y. We translate along Z and we rotate about Z. So keep that in mind, those six degrees of freedom, two different types, rotational and translational. You'll hear the term pitch, roll, and yaw. Those are the rotational degrees of freedom. So this is a brief review. Um, it covers the bulk of what's in the final at, at the level. Uh, the problems you're going to have, if you understand these concepts, the problems you're going to have are arithmetic problems and just keeping the numbers straight. So as you do this test, have a piece of paper and a calculator by, at, your, at your fingertips and write the answer down or write the problem down, write the answer and check the answer with your calculator. You'll do just fine. Um, again, I'll post a couple more videos, a little bit more advanced concepts for position and then a very, very brief one about run out. There's nothing on run out in the final. So um, it won't be the crisis of the century if you don't see either one of these, but I do want to, to present them because you paid for them. Um, other than that, um, hopefully everything's going well. Uh, I haven't heard much from anybody, but um, it's going to get real serious here on Monday. Again, this is a, the one instance where we have to sort of play by the rules and uh, get the test done at the time and for the duration that's allowed. Um, if you have any questions after the grading period, obviously I'll be glad to talk with you. We can review anything. Hopefully a lot of this COVID stuff will be lifted and we'll be able to meet face to face.